Welcome back to Arkansas Bigfoot. I hope everybody is having a great day. I thought we'd take a little bit of time to explore down the rabbit hole and look at some of the more extraordinary incidents and experiences that we've had wandering around out in the Bigfoot woods. It's no great mystery that we've had our own fair share of strange encounters and levels of paranormal experience out there, so I thought I'd try to elaborate on some of it a little more in detail and see if we can't run something else out the other end of this rabbit hole. I've come to realize in a very crashingly clear way by talking to other people about their experiences and listening to other people's stories about their experiences that whenever you really start getting a lot of Bigfoot activity in an area the whole paranormal side of it starts to come into play as well and that's been our experience many many times out there typically it follows a similar pattern where there's just some gradual little things little subliminal or little subtle things that happen that you just kinda brush off and go on with what you're doing and then as time goes on it escalates more and more you know, with us, a lot of it started after a lot of the stick structures and what we call the glyphs started appearing in volume out there. And we'll tie all this together, and I think a lot of you that follow the channel already know what my answer or my thought is to that, but... We'll just follow the progression and see if it's similar to anybody else's story. Probably one of the first really visible things that we started witnessing were the appearance of the orbs. And sometimes it would just be a quick light flash. Other times you could see them purposefully moving through the woods daytime nighttime really didn't make much difference what time of day it was we've seen them when we've been out early in the morning late in the afternoon or doing our night walks of course to the camera they're a lot more visible at nighttime But we've had that experience several, several times out there. Strange anomalous flashes that come across the screen. Some of them, if you slow them down, will make a, like a silhouette of a shape of, sometimes it's a Sasquatch, sometimes it's another animalistic type creature or a humanoid type creature shape that are 
hidden in these flashes of light. Another thing that started happening about that exact same time were the detached voices. Uh, we've had what you would consider EVPs or something in a hidden or cloaked form talking to us in the distance 20, 30 feet away in the brush. Sometimes it sounds like a mixture between Native American dialect and something else. Other times it sounds like it's a mixture of all different types of languages. Sometimes it sounds very n normal, like a young person talking or mimicking one of us talking. Well, that is something that Bigfoot is definitely guilty of doing. They'll mimic human voices or sounds of other animals. Sometimes they'll sound like a owl or another type of animal out in the woods. A lot of times they'll mimic the dog when you know there's not a dog anywhere around or they'll mimic a person's voice that they hear consistently and we've heard that but on a much stranger level are some of the elemental or paranormal experiences that we've seen and felt out there and that's kind of what I'm going to elaborate on today. Probably the one that sticks out in my mind the most as being that what the hell is this factor was the day that we were filming a video for Rachel's channel and we were back in the mound area we have this area back there that we call the fairy mound and it's this unnatural mound or hill that is deeper into the woods that is in the bottoms and everything is flat around it and this is mounded up probably eight foot nine foot tall at the center 35 yards long and maybe 15 to 20 yards across and it's just this unnatural hump in the middle of all of this flat bottom land and it has got some really bizarre energy about it whenever you step near it or on it it physically makes you feel like you're stepping outside of yourself it's a very energetic place but we were back in that area setting up a little gifting spot for some of these elementals that we suspected were back there and I'd had the camera off for a little bit we took a break and got a drink out of the bucket and we were standing there deciding which way we wanted to go and I looked up the trail and when I first glanced I thought it was an animal something like a raccoon or a groundhog or something that size you know two foot two foot tall but it didn't look right and so I started walking a little bit closer and I could see that it was on two legs and that it had a very human body shape to it except that it was brown had hair and as I got just a few more steps closer to it it kind of turned and looked over its shoulder and you could see a complete human face on it now this isn't something that I would consider a baby Sasquatch it was something entirely different and if that's not weird enough in and of itself the tree that it was standing near probably two foot in diameter a fairly decent sized tree it turned and faced the tree took a few steps and walked 
directly into the trunk of this tree and disappeared into thin air. Yeah, I looked at her and she looked at me and we both just shook our head because we couldn't believe what we had just saw. And I'm not sure what to classify it as, but it had a very humanistic face. It was on two legs, walking on two legs about two foot tall had hair or clothing that was made of hair or you know something that resembled hair and had the ability to just walk into a tree and disappear and so let's take a look at this next image and this was off of a trail camera that we put around a little gifting area that Rachel had developed back near that same ferry mound. And you can see down on the ground the little silver can that we had put some trinkets and different little gifts in and it left. I had two cameras one pointed directly at that and one off to the side and this is the only image that came up on either of them and at first glance on the small screen at first I thought it was an animal coming down the tree but then after I uploaded it to the computer where I could actually see it you can see that there's a vapor trail coming off of the bottom and it's translucent in several spots it looks like there's probably a little more of it around the back side of that tree. Yeah, I'm not sure what to call this other than an apparition. But whatever it was had enough physical mass to set the motion detector off on the camera. So was it something that was coming in and out? something that was half physical half non-physical at the moment when it tripped the motion sensor on the camera but that's the only image that snapped on it there was nothing before and nothing after that and we talk a lot about the interdimensional abilities of the Sasquatch and the portals and I realize that some people just can't get behind that at all but you know that's been our experience and that's been our understanding and that's what we actually believe and think is happening you know there's not any 3d logical explanation for all of these things that occur so you've got to get your head out of that limited box and start thinking in larger terms and quantum terms and a greater concept of potentiality of what can be happening and we've talked about the Sasquatch ability to cloak or hide and early on it was along the lines of thinking that you know maybe their hair or fur whichever you prefer to call it was able to chameleon itself toward whatever it was standing near or next to but we've seen so many shadow variations of them like this photo of Rachel and the big guy and Koo up on the hill you can clearly see his entire body structure he's about 12 foot tall and you can also see completely through him and see the limbs of the trees behind him. So once again, this is that half in, half out. Just like this next photo of Junior standing off the side of the trail in shadow form. He's about seven foot tall and you can make out his entire body structure standing off to the side of the trail near the bushes watching us pass by now that was a screenshot off of one of the videos and that was probably about 25 feet away from us as we passed 
you know, on several occasions out there we've caught out of the corner of our eye these beings or forest dwellers or elementals or whichever term you want to label them we can see them running past us through the woods darting from tree to tree some of them are very tiny some of them are human sized and we've seen what we call the shimmer figures out there that are the size of a normal person with the full body silhouette of a person but they're entirely translucent with just a shimmering effect around them we've seen little elemental beings that could be in the classification of something like a pixie or a sprite or whatever term applies to these smaller beings and we've had several that were in between this image here is one that is also another screenshot from one of the videos and you can clearly see him standing in the bushes he's got the pointed ears a bulbous nose a big forehead looks like he may have a hairline or a cap kind of pulled back on his head and the very narrow and small chin and what looks like a coat or garment or something that he's wearing and that one I'm guessing is around four and a half foot to five foot tall judging by the size of the brush that he's standing in and the distance away it was at the time and some of these others are down on the extreme opposite end of the scale they're little bitty this one that's peeking through the fork of a log that's laying on the ground and you can see his face and what looks like a little hand kind of resting right in the fork of that log Of course, there's a lot of other faces that appear out there in the trees during the videos. Sometimes you'll see what they call the dryad, the tree face creatures. And some of them are very obvious when you look at them. Others are a little more subtle. They're kind of in that shadow state when you see them and numerous people have sent us photos throughout different videos where they've picked out these faces watching us as we're walking through the woods another cryptid or entity or elemental or creature that seems to be a common theme with some researchers is the whole dogman aspect and you know historically the folklore goes back forever pertaining to werewolves or hellhounds or dog-like creatures my own personal experience with anything close to that was on the full moon video we did in February and we had went down to the woods before dark to get the camera equipment set up and we were just kind of hanging around that back gifting tree around that ground structure that's there and as it got dark I had a lantern that I wanted to set out about 20 feet in front of the camera to give it a little bit of light to focus on and as I was walking to where I wanted to put this lantern down on the ground this canine looking thing came out of the creek bottom and you could tell 
that it wasn't a dog, it wasn't a wolf, it wasn't a coyote. It just didn't look right, it didn't look natural. There was something off about it. And it stood there and stared at me for a few seconds. I stared at it, I just kind of froze in my tracks and it silently turned around and walked back out through the woods. We never could pin down or figure out exactly what it was. We went back the next day in the daylight and tried to find tracks in the mud of the creek and there were no dog tracks or anything. So whatever it was, it moved through there without leaving a print or an impression. My thought on that is that a lot of these elemental things that are out there have the ability to shapeshift. They can appear as animals, they can appear as people, and all kinds of things in between. And it's almost ghost-like in the way that they move through. And I think that's what that particular situation was. And as far as an actual cryptid dogman, we've never seen one down there. We have found a couple of sets of prints in the mud. One was a three-toed and one was a four-toed print that were about seven inches long in the shape of a canine print. And that happened right around that February video as well. But it was farther up by the first gifting tree that we found those in the mud. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about the whole dogman aspect of it. It's hard for me to get my mind wrapped around a creature that is genetically half human, half dog. It just doesn't compute, so to speak. But we've come to learn that anything and everything is possible. We have seen some crazy weird stuff, so Dogman isn't something I particularly want in the woods. Something I could care less if I ever had an encounter with. But a lot of people have. A lot of people have experienced it. And I am definitely not going to discount it and say that it's not out there. We have had ghostly apparitions appear in front of our eyes and we've also caught them on camera. The one instance we were back behind the mound in that area of the woods and as we came down the slope of the hill Rachel saw it first, but it looked like a person standing down in the brushy area of that bottom. And she whispered at me, hey, look over here. And I did, and you could see the yellow or reddish yellow blonde hair and what looked like a white muslin shirt or something like that that was laced up in the front but it looked like a person standing down there and we took a few more steps toward it and realized you could see completely through it. Full head and shoulders, body, you know, you could see the whole whole body shape. It got a little bit closer and it vanished. Came back probably five or six days later in that same area, coming down the hill again and there it was a second time same situation and once again when we got down closer to it it just vanished into nothing so in a nutshell we've got the whole Bigfoot aspect going on there's other types of cryptid or elemental things that are happening down there ghostly apparitions um, EVP or detached voices we've had mimicking voices where it sounds like another person is either you know calling out or saying a word or a few words and 
you can tell that it's not coming out of a real person standing right there it's in the other Strange glowing lights, flashes of light, a lot of orbs going on down there. And there are a lot of things that exist in those other planes, those other layers that punch through off and on and sometimes more frequently than not. And I think after the Sasquatch started making all of the structures and laying out the glyphs and all of that, that was because they had created these portals to traverse either to different points in the woods or to different sets of woods or different locations or to wherever it is that they go to. And with those doorways being open, these other things that are resonating on similar frequencies have the ability to come in and come out and a lot of these glyphs that we're understanding are put in place as a buffer or a filter to try to keep some of the more negative things from coming through so I guess the point that I want to make with that is if you have an area where there's a lot of Sasquatch activity and you start seeing these glyphs and these structures and things appear don't be so quick to take it as them telling you to stay out of their area they might be actually trying to help you to keep other negative things out but as always whenever you're out in the woods stay safe be aware Keep your eyes wide open all the time. Appreciate you guys coming along today. Hope you enjoyed this video and hit the like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you down the trail. Thanks.